This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Oh boy. Time for more of Fruit of Grisea, everybody. So, I just want to point out, this game has, like, no dialogue choices. I haven't made one single decision in this entire VN. It literally feels like I'm just reading a book or watching a movie, which is strange. Big contrast with Clannad, where you had, like, a choice to make every, like, few minutes. It's like the polar opposite. Still very good, though. Anyhow, we basically now have... <laughs> I feel like at this point, Amine is now apparently our big sister, or at least according to her, and then Machina is like our little sister. It's a little strange. But we're here to continue some more wacky shenanigans. Wait, that's... That's not what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to load this save, not start a new game. Alright, back in the good old classroom. We got those bells. Just like at any other school, the start of recess period here means that someone runs off to buy drinks for the group. What? That does not happen in American schools. There was a similar system at my previous school, so the event itself is familiar. The fact that our designated gopher puts on a maid uniform for the task, on the other hand, is still going to take some getting used to. Of course it would be Saji. Saji, you don't have to give us, like, our own drinks. Come on. Sachi's always the one who does this? Make some of the other girls do it, at least. Or how about everyone gets their own drinks? Alright. Fair enough. Alright. <laughs> Everyone's getting tea. Um, <laughs> bartender, get me a milk. Chocolate. What's available? Oh no, this is gonna go bad. Hmm. In that case, I'll have university. <laughs> Good pun. Thought I'd keep the tea combo going. <laughs> University. <laughs> Hold the gum syrup. <laughs> yeah, University. Mm. <laughs> Shaken, not stirred. What's up, Nick? How's it going? <laughs> De they're definitely following the Japanese stereotype of everyone drinking tea. I thought that the university joke was pretty funny. <laughs> Synchronicity! Nice one, Makina. <laughs> hey, don't call her stupid. She's not stupid. She just acts way too young for her age. True, my bad. But when you offer me anything, I think it's only natural to want to explore the limits. Okay then, I'll go with water. Make mine non-carbonated. <laughs> That's the lowest maintenance thing you can ask for. I just want water. Wolfgang Puck water, please. We should have asked her for the water at Wolfgang Puck. It's the best water. Non-carbonated milk. That, I don't know if there's any variety that's not non-carbonated. Drinking coffee! <laughs> coffee seems to be a popular beverage. I don't dare try it myself, because I'm pretty sure if I did, I wouldn't be able to live without it. <laughs> She's trying to copy us, basically. That's it. Why the glare in my direction? It's not my fault if she's mimicking me. Poor Sachi. <laughs> Okay. 
<laughs> Sachi goes to the supermarket, opens every vein of milk, tastes all of them, and picks the tastiest one. With those words, Sachi picks up the hem of her skirt and bows to us and then quietly leaves the classroom. Well, that, that is a bit of a problem. <laughs> oh, so she's basically just a parrot. Nah, Amine, you've, you've definitely dropped some cuss words. I actually think Yumiko has been one of the least foul-mouthed people here, despite her trying to murder us. What? Was the girl even worse when she arrived here? Also, we're all talking about her as if she's not here. I believe that. Hmm. Anyone has a faint or two in their past that they don't want others to know about. And if you're attending a school like this, merely touching on the subject is probably enough to make some old wounds ache. There seems to be an established principle of mutual restraint when it comes to these sore spots. Our conversation shifts, shifts fairly smoothly away from the details. That's nice. I'm glad she's becoming more outgoing. I just think she needs to keep on going. That's real impressive. I'm picturing DW. <laughs> Try a little something new. Oh, having favorite foods is fine, but don't reject something you haven't tried. At least eat some before you decide to hate it. Sound advice. Yep. Experience is the most useful possible form of knowledge, a precious privilege reserved for those who manage to stay alive. Sometimes the most instructive and memorable lessons of all come from the depths of your comrades. Jeez. But I wasn't trying to preach to Makina or make any complicated argument about her values. I just wanted to get across that ignorance isn't something you should cling to proudly. You're only embarrassing yourself when you insist that you hate some food you've never eaten. Accept <laughs> the good and let's try to improve the bad. For example... <laughs> that could be the fault of any number of students here, except Sachi. You're blaming me? <laughs> I don't know about that. Hey, Makina, seems like you've been coming off as a little arrogant lately. Better watch your step, got it? <laughs> He's very blunt. Alright, maybe we need to improve our attitude a bit. Yoshiko? Oh boy. Depends. Well, we can try, but I don't think it works that way. I think the problem's with the sample she's working off, to be honest. 
あんたがそれを言う今の私がこうして元気でいるのもみんなのおかげなのよ。Well, that's good, Makina. マネーからは無駄な明るさを学んで、ユミちゃんからは本を楽しむことを通じて学ぶってことを教わったし、サッチンからは努力とか簡単に諦めない心ってのを学んだし。Well, when, when she's putting it like this, it actually sounds very nice. お兄ちゃんからは生きるための。That was very profound, Makina. Good job. Wow! Poor Michiru. I feel like you could learn to be happy from her, not Amine. <laughs> you should pick up the funny facial expressions. Oh, yes! Yes, Makina, exactly. <laughs> I think you need a better way of life, Michiru. Wow! This poor girl! <laughs> poor Michiru! <laughs> Don't think you can worm your way out of it like that. Oh, brother. <sighs> Stop being so mean to this girl. I feel like the reason Michiru is acting the way she does is because everyone is so mean to her. Mm, that's not true. Whoops, the break's already over. Oh, I hope not. We know there are gains roaming the streets. Only three numbers? <laughs> oh no, she's finding the tastiest milk, so she's actually going to go to like a cow in the field and milk it there. Wow. What's this? What happened? Knew it. Dang, Sachi, what the heck? That woman's devotion knows no limits. No! Sachi! Okay, I think I might have been right about this one. Makina's personality getting warped might have been inevitable, considering the references she's working from here. Well, not to say that I'm any exception. Well, that happened. Oh boy, we got called to the principal's office. What did we do? Whoopee cushion on the chair? I had assumed the job of a principal mainly involved counting your school's money, then begging for more. That and signing off on paperwork you haven't really read. And judging from the way Chizuru has the free time to call me into the chat for no particular reason, even going so far as to make the tea herself, my guess may not have been that far off the mark. But well, even if, if that's the truth of the matter, pointing it out would no doubt hurt the woman's self-esteem. A good man knows when to keep his trap shut, as my master put it. Hey, principal. Not in the least. Yes, I still have the problem of people trying to murder me and sexual harassment. Ugh, that's not what I meant. I don't know. 
It sort of feels like I'm just playing a student for some undercover operation. Can't quite settle down. Well, I won't deny that. But sometimes I'll catch a glimpse of myself smiling in a pane of glass and just flinch. It's like I'm looking at someone else. It feels... awkward. I just want to ask that guy, what's so funny, asshole? Who do you think you are? And before I know it, the smile's fallen right off my face. Hmm. Alright, here's a simple analogy. You know when you're having sex in a hotel? No, I don't. And get a look at yourself going at it in the mirror, and you're just like, what are you, a monkey? The whole thing seems ridiculous, right? Same deal. Yeah, why did you use that as an example? Really? Okay then, let's try this one. This guy I knew told me a story about the time his parents caught him screwing a pillow in the middle of the night. Are all of your analogies having to do with sex? In that moment, cursing his own ADC, he longed for the release of death. I think that sense of shame might be somewhat similar. Not really. How do we get on this topic anyway? Hey, Sonic, you joined at a weird time, <laughs> but welcome. Feel free. This school is definitely weird, but the, the characters are pretty entertaining. Also, is the principal literally the only staff member in the entire school? So, they've all got their own circumstances, huh? Figured as much. I like that premise a lot, honestly. Just the school that has like a couple students with interesting circumstances. Hey, Florin, welcome! Well, how's it going? But the nature of these circumstances isn't made clear to any of the other students. Or so it would seem. Okay, there are other teachers, but they don't matter and they don't have sprites. Okay. I didn't know if it was the principal teaching all the classes and doing the principal stuff. Because she's the only one we've seen. Hmm. Interesting. In other words, you throw a bunch of losers together in the hope that they'll lick each other's wounds? Wow! Hmm. Interesting. Sounds pretty when you put it that way, but basically you gathered a bunch of rich kids who couldn't handle regular school, raked in a ton of donations from people with a guilty conscience about how their children turned out, and then made up an excuse about healing in their own time when no one improved no matter how much money you threw at the problem? Wow. Oh! Aha! I knew Yumiko's family had... A lot of pull. That's why she's able to get away with trying to murder me. <laughs> Didn't know Machina's were as well, though. Wow. Ah, my bad. Let's stop talking about money. Whether I'm right or not, this is just going to lead into a lot of outraged self-defense. And wherever the money's coming from, it's covering my free tuition, so I hardly have the right to criticize. Why did you call me here in the first place? <laughs> she had a new tea recipe she wanted to try out. You mean apart from the complaints I've already launched about attempted murder and sexual assault? <laughs> Like I said, there's no real problems. Yes, there are! 
Just can't get used to like them like this yet. Oh, for <laughs> faux shizzle. With some more, with some more than others. As you know, I'm not the most sociable human being, and thanks to my master's influence, I've got a bit of a sarcastic streak. It does lead to some misunderstandings. Like when you told Sachi to dress in her underwear? I guess you could say I've run into some minor communication problems. No, no, I think it's a lot more than that. <laughs> she knows. She knows. What do you expect in a school that was founded to collect warped people and fix them? Or maybe to sweep them under the rug? Whichever. Beating the flaws out of a warped sheet of iron, gathering the failed works, and stuffing them in the dark closet? This place is more like a metal shop than a school. Because he's kind of a dick. Didn't I just tell you? I have some issues with communication. I guess you might have been hoping that adding a truly twisted individual like myself would offset the others warping and set them back on the right track. But apparently it hasn't worked out too well. Gratitude toward the person who saved your life, is it? We saved her life, apparently. It was a coincidence that I was the one who saved you, and I was acting on orders. Are we a Secret Service agent? Don't actually tell me, but that's kind of my theory. We're either like a spy or a secret agent or a vigilante mercenary or something. That's just something you arbitrarily convinced yourself of. And not to repeat myself, but I didn't save you for any special reason. <laughs> What's with the puffed cheeks? <laughs> I think I deserve a reward. No, you've done more than enough. あなたの思っていた普通の学園とは少し違うかもしれないし、クラスメートに変わった子が多いのは認めるけれど、それでも私にはこれが精一杯なの。ごめんなさい。Not a problem. Not that I buy every word coming out of the principal's mouth, but when you get down to it, a place like this is probably just about right for someone of circumstances like mine. Tossing the likes of me in the run of the mill. Hey, McAfee, I don't care if my computer's at risk. Like, I literally don't care at all. Tossing the likes of me into a run of the mill school wasn't a great way to begin with. Pushing my way into a crowd of people with completely different values probably would have made for a tense and irritating experience. Alright then, are we done here? Yeah, Got it. What is it? Oh, well, do you really want to know? My thoughts? <laughs> rank the girls, whoever you rank as the top. That's the route you go on. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm... Sakaki, huh? I haven't known her for that long, and honestly, I can't say that I have a particularly firm read on her. And to be perfectly frank, this is the woman who started slashing at me with a box cutter out of nowhere. I can't say that I'm that eager to get deeply involved with her. Alright, these are just my impressions. If you put it nicely, she's a rational type that doesn't waste her time. Put it harshly, and she's just apathetic. Unless it's blocking her way, that girl's not going to bother picking up something that falls down. That's how she comes off, at least. That applies to her relationships with others as well. Sakaki seems to avoid getting involved with someone unless she absolutely has to. She'll respond when you talk to her, but rarely joins the conversation otherwise. I guess you could interpret her quietness as an attempt to avoid hostility or attempts at intimacy from others, but... I think it's partly that she doesn't under she simply doesn't understand how to build relationships of mutual trust. And if someone else tries to bridge that gap, she'll take it as an intrusion on her territory and violently reject them. I think those are the major points. I've been consciously trying not to be pushy or intrusive with her, but... Well, I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> oh, she's, a gr she's great. 
Michiru, huh? That girl's off her rocker. Wow. The other day, I saw her wandering the dorm hallways, moaning with clean wrap rolled around her head. What kind of a ritual is that supposed to be? She was dyeing her hair. ちょっと、ぶりっちをしていたんじゃないかしら。彼女、月に一度ぐらいのペースで髪を脱色しているみたいなのだけれど、その脱色に使うやつ。She you're kidding, right? Sachi has pink hair, Yumiko has purple hair, Amane has red hair. I don't think bleached blonde hair is the most problematic hair color. True enough, it seems like she has her reasons for going with that hair color, too. Guess there's no need to force her to stop. Hmm? About what? No, well, she said, I'm a tsundere, so it has to be this way. But I don't know anything more than that. <laughs> you don't want to know, Principal. Okay, just to sum the girl up, she's just a generally incompetent human being. You're so mean to her! Although, you might get distracted by that flashy blonde hair at first. It's not representative of who she really is. That coloration is actually a warning signal. By going out of her way to be so highly visible, she's announcing to everyone who sees her that I'm poisonous. Jeez! But in the end, it's nothing more than an empty threat. In other words, Michiru is so weak that she feels the need to project hollow menace in self-defense. That girl wouldn't last a minute on her own. She has to form symbiotic relationships to survive. Wow! You are so incredibly rude to this girl. But she's also counterproductively cautious around others, and has a hard time trusting their charity or affection. In that sense, Sachi's a unique presence in Michiru's life. If you ask me, Michiru might be trying to figure out just how selfish can I be before Sachi rejects me, by slowly pushing at the limits of her kindness. <sighs> wow. What? For the record, these are just my opinions based on what I've seen of Michiru, so I might be completely off base. <laughs> Poor Michiru. People do call me perceptive sometimes. When you grow up nervously watching the expressions on other people's faces, you naturally pick up a habit of observing others. As she speaks, Principal Tachibana takes a binder stuffed with documents from her desk and then begins flipping through the contents. Hmm. Well, that's not the only reason in my case. Oh, she's the best. Sachi, eh? On the surface, she's just insanely serious about everything. Kind of an awkward girl. I think she's got the idea that diligent obedience is her only redeeming feature. Wow. Guess you could classify her as a tortoise rather than a hare. But it seems more and more that she's decided that for herself. Like, she's just given up on developing her talents any further. That's not the impression I got of her. Basically, she's the type who thinks about resolving a huge problem over the course of ten years of hard work. She seems incapable of even considering a search for easier methods, let alone turning to others for help. Imagine the principal having a root. <laughs> I honestly would not even be surprised. If you told her, build a castle here, she'd start stacking up stones by herself. She's serious, honest, and follows any instruction she's given obediently. To the point where it often seems like she's more of, like more like a robot than a human being. That girl's faithful to her orders, but she doesn't think about efficiency while when carrying them out. It's almost like she's punishing herself. If someone doesn't teach that girl to let off some steam, she's going to explode someday. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> She's like, but with Sachi around, we don't need to hire a janitor. Try not to fall into the mistake of thinking I've created an appropriate setting, so now I can just leave the students to take care of themselves. <laughs> Hmm. 
だからこうして定期的に個人面談という形であなたたちの意見を聞いているのだし。そう、you've had this sort of discussion with the others as well? ねえ、そう。折を見ては面談をしたり、話すのが苦手な子には日誌を提出してもらったりしているの。Diaries? 日誌というか、あれは絵日記に近いかしらね。マーケナ、is it? ごめんさつあの子の言葉は少し理解するのが難しいし話をしている最中に何を話そうとしていたのか忘れてしまうようなことが多いから思い立ったことを紙に記録したものを提出してもらっているのあの子結構絵が上手だから面白いわよ I see Yeah, in Makina's case I think a diary would probably be more coherent あなたイリスさんとずいぶん仲良くなったみたいねとても珍しいことよイリスさんはね、oh, そうは言えないかもしれないけれど<笑>日常生活に支障が出るほどの人見知りなのにあなたどうやって彼女と仲良くなったの I caught her a crawfish That's it Piece of cake Just taught her a few grown up games Now she comes by my room every night Um you should have put that a different way It's a joke. Don't give me that look. <laughs> Dude, if, if, you're, if you're making jokes like that, you might end up in jail. If you ask me, Makina is kind of the exact opposite of Michiru. She plays up her own weaknesses to take advantage of the protection of others, but like her bizarre speech patterns and quirky habits. The aggressive way she cuddles up to people, all that. I think it's something she does by instinct to invite compassion from the strong. That sort of trick works on many men, but it's not going to work, make her popular with her own sex. I wouldn't be surprised if she'd been bullied as a result. Oh. The reason Ma、uh, Makina's taken to Amine so much is probably because of Amine's unusually strong protective instinct. But I think Amine's large body and the oddly masculine parts of her personality are also a factor. Wow. If you want Makina to like you, communicate that you don't intend her any harm, and then demonstrate that you're strong. She'll side over it up to her, you herself. なんだかずいぶんと歪んでいるというか、ダサン的な関係なのね。Not a fan of that. Don't know about that. It's a fact that I don't dislike Makina, and she herself understands perfectly well that I've seen through her. Fact is, Makina is much smarter than she lets on. そんな関係でいいとあなたは思っているの ？That's not what I'm saying. For one thing, it's not like I can always be around to protect her. If you're completely convinced that someone's going to keep you safe at all times, you'll turn into the sort of person who can't do anything in a real emergency. Amine's enough if she wants someone to spoil and protect her. I'm trying to convey the value of independence and self defense. That's good. <laughs> Both. An interesting interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> she sucks. <laughs> hmm, Amine, huh? To be honest, she's the biggest mystery to me. Her painfully cheery personality and burning need to help others is one thing, but I have no idea why she clings to me so persistently. Were you eavesdropping? Do you have security cameras everywhere? That's what I don't understand. See me walk by, and your first thought is going to be, that's a suspicious character. And she's saying she fell in love with me at first sight. She must be the most deranged of all of them. I don't have an answer, so let me ask you instead. What kind of a woman is she? Hmm. The principal flips quickly through the document she's holding. <laughs> she doesn't act it. Hey now, you shouldn't give away a woman's age like that. Pretty cruel. In that case, how many years older than me are you, Chitsuru? What's the matter? You've inexplicably broken into a sweat. <laughs> oh, this is going to be one of those cases of you never find out how old the principal is, her p a d e r p a s c r p I didn't ask you about that. <laughs> 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 
She rides a chopper? <laughs> um, no and no. Alright, I get the picture. Guess I'll give up on the age fan. Can't make any guarantees, but I will put in the effort. Are we done here? Will you actually help me, or will you just say, Sounds like a personal problem. Figure it out yourself. Alright then, I'll be going. I can't quite get used to my life at this school. I was being perfectly honest when I told Chizuru that my own smile feels awkward to me. A normal student life in a normal school. It's hard for me to believe how readily I'm accepting these small fragments of happiness. Or maybe... Right. Maybe it's hard for me to forgive. I don't think I'm really feeling awkward when I see that smile. I'm feeling guilt. It feels like foul gas gathering in my body. Like my blood's turning black and vicious in my veins. A stifling sensation as if my lungs are slowly filling with a cold poison. Look, you. Do you really think this is where you should be? what you should be doing right now? Vague, impatient questions dominate my mind. I feel a pressing need to do something, anything, but no concrete course of action presents itself. The principal tells me that I'll get used to this soon, but what good would that do even if I could? No matter how I change, none of the things that I've lost are ever coming back. 